that feed you with knowledge and understanding. I like, I like that because that really, I would like all of us to take that verse together. That's Jeremiah 3.15. Are we there? After two. One, two. I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And God is faithful. The pastors he has given, that's the spiritual leader. The overseer that God has given, that's the spiritual leader. The structure of the ministry, that is the spiritual leadership. You can hear how clear God brought it out. And I will give unto you what? Pastors that will do what? Feed you, teach you, and instruct you. So in the first place we read, we see God, how God gave the responsibility of the watchman, of his people to who? To Ezekiel. And he called him what? He said he called him a, a watchman. Thank you. He called him a watchman. And what is the job of a watchman in those days? The watchman is that person that sits right on the tower and is looking from afar. He's looking afar to make sure that the whole city is safe. If there is any evil coming, what does he do? He takes out his trumpet and blows signal so that everybody can go and take cover. God says exactly the same responsibility he has given unto our spiritual leaders. Now, he was telling, God was telling Ezekiel, if that watchman, if he blows the trumpet and the pe people are careless, who will God blame? God will blame the people. Thank you. But if Ezekiel, as the watchman, sees evil coming, and he fails to warn the people, who will God take hold responsible? Thank you, Ezekiel. So also, God has chosen pastors for us. And the same responsibility as he gave it to Ezekiel, he has given them. That if anything he says, he, the pastor is to do what? Tell us. Tell his people. Warn his people. Guide his people. So that no evil, so that the devil will not be able to take advantage of them. May God bless our pastors. May God bless our overseers. All the structure of ministry, may God bless them. And by this lesson, may God help us to submit to them. May God help us to submit to them. I would like somebody to take the introduction for us quickly. Underline all the basic teachings of Christ. No. No. It's um, the oh, word of God. Sorry. The word of God teaches us in many places that the ministers are instructed by God to feed us his word. And they will be held accountable as to whether they have done this. We are taught to obey those who have the spiritual responsibility for the welfare of our souls. Thank you very much, sister. So that also does what it emphasizes. In fact, the word I want us to really pay attention there is that God ordained them. Who ordained them? Who gave them the responsibility? Who are they going to account to? And that is why if we go back to our memory verse, it says, and we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor, labor among you, and that are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love. For what? For their work's sake. May God help us to esteem our spiritual leaders. May God help us to esteem our spiritual leaders. Let's, let's start. Let's go to question number one. Question number one. Who is reading for us? Yes. Can you take the microphone, please? For his people in Old Testament times. Thank you. It says we should see John chapter 1, verse 17, and 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. Yes, who is reading for us? John chapter 1, verse 17. 17. Hmm. For the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Thank you. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 21. 
21. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but only men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Thank you. So, in the olden days, how did God provide spiritual leadership? Through who? Through who? Through the law, yes. And when we say the law, who does that law? Moses, yes. Who else gave spiritual leadership in those days? Abraham. Thank you, Abraham. Yes, who else? Abraham, Noah, Isaac, Jacob, Joshua. Thank you. And on and on and on. Even in those days, a father of the house, God held responsible as what? As the priest for the house. As the prophet for the house. And so also today. So also today. Okay? God has also, as we have said in our lesson in the Jeremiah, he says, God has given unto us who? Pastors. In this day. Let's quickly see question two. Question two. Yes, from this side. Yes, sister. Question two. Under the law, it was vitally important for the people to obey what? Thus said the Lord, as it was revealed to them through his priests and prophets. Punishment. Many times death was inflicted on those who disobeyed. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 28. There are many places in the scriptures where we are shown in the importance of being obedient to those God has put in the position of authority over us. Why should his commands be obeyed and the instructions for his ministers and pastors be heeded in our day? Thank you. He says, in those days, what was the punishment when they disobeyed? What was the punishment? Death. Correct. You know, when we take it from where we started from, somebody that is going on a journey, and there are signs and uh, instructions on the way, and it doesn't take heed. What are the things that can happen to that person? Yes, Benjamin? Accident. Accident, yes. And in that accident, what are the things? Yes, what else can happen? Yes, sister? He's not heeding the warning and signs. He may run foul of the law, and punishment follows. Thank you. They can fine him, charge him to court. They can even imprison him. But also, like Benjamin said, Brother Benjamin said, yes, sister. Thank you. That's where I was going. The accident, that accident can actually result to what? Him losing his life. So as death was the punishment then, even today, the disobedience, also, it is possible that it can lead to what? Death, physical death. But we know definitely that every disobedient person, there is a spiritual death that happens. Is that correct? We can remember Adam and Eve. For disobeying the word of God, immediately what happened? They spiritually died. Let's look at question number three. What provisions? What provisions? Did God make for the spiritual leadership of his people in the New Testament church? See Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. Thank you. Yes, who is reading Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12 for us? Thank you. Wait for the mic, sister. Thank you. Prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Twelve, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the defining of the body of Christ. Thank you. So, what provision did God make for us in this New Testament age? For spiritual leadership. Yes. We have mentioned them. We want to remind ourselves. Yes. Yes, brother. Yes. Yes. Do we have apostles and prophets in our midst today? What do we call them in apostolic faith? We call them pastors and ministers. We call them overseers. Yes. We call them teachers. Even our musicians. 
What are they doing? They are preaching the word in music, in songs. So God gave all for what? To edify, to uplift our hearts, that we'll be able to worship God, we will understand God more, we'll be able to submit more. As we submit to this spiritual leadership, who are we submitting to? We are submitting to God because we can see here, affirmatively, that God ordained them there. God ordained them to help us, to be a blessing unto us, to show us the way, to guide us, and may God help us to submit to them. And today, when we see the way they were appointed in the Bible, today, is that the same way they have been appointed in our midst? Yes, thank God. After the, the, minister, the elderly ministers have prayed, and they say this is the, they'll do what? They lay hands just the way it was done in the Bible. So it is still done today. May God give us the grace to appreciate all these things that he has put all around us to guide us onto the way of heaven. Let's do question number four. Question number four. Sister Fumi. The leader of a church congregation is usually called a pastor. Webster de defines pastor as one who is a shepherd of the flock or one who feeds the people spiritually. Note some of the responsibilities of a shepherd in Bible times and parallel these duties to the duties of a pastor. Thank you very much, ma. So Webster is a dictionary. The Webster dictionary is, is that where that has been drawn from. That a pastor is somebody who is a shepherd of the flock. Okay, so let us look. The shepherd in those olden days, and let us parallel them today with the duties of our pastors and our ministers and our overseers. Yes? What do those shepherd used to do then that they are doing yes sister shepherds they always look after their sheep maybe when there is danger they will actions yes so how does our pastors today how do they do the same our pastors maybe we are in trouble when we go to them they will pray for us thank you safe. yes yes sister hold for wait for the mic thank you in the New Testament, someone like Paul, in most of the epistles, we see that he's always praying for his sh um, sh um, ships, right? Mm. And yes, likewise, our pastors these days, we, they are always praying for us, and we can always see it when they say, I'm, I'm praying for you, I pray God for you. God bless you, God bless you. But let us look at those shepherds in the bush, the real shepherd with the animal sheep, and that's the complement, we want to use that to compare and contrast. Yes, Sister Fumi. Please, can you get them wait for the mic? Thank when you. When shepherds take their flocks out, yeah. when they are coming back, they check them one by one. And when one is lost, they keep um, the safe ones in the barn and, uh, or in a place and go out to look for the lost one. So how do our pastors today, how do they do the that? Same thing. When they look around and maybe someone is not really coming or they, they maybe they call or they give someone a responsibility to really be on the neck of that person so that that lost one can come back to the fold. Thank you. They can send for visitation. Uh, before I come to daddy, yes, sister at the back with the yes. Thank you. Uh, the shepherd in the field make sure that the flock gets the basic things that they need to survive. Feed them, give them Thank water. I, Likewise, our pastors I, I, too. I was going to they, ask that the first thing is to eat now. They, okay. They, they Thank ensure you. that our welfare is all right. Thank you. Up to the point that even if one of us is out of job, they try all possible means to uh, secure a job for God their bless members. You. I'm a God beneficiary. Bless. Thank you very much. You're a beneficiary. I'm a beneficiary too. Yes. Yes. Yes, sister. If the shepherd see the floor sick, he will take care of them. So also the pastor take care of the people. Thank you. Thank you. Please, can you bring the mic here to brother too? Shepherds in the face, safeguard. 
their sheep from mm. danger. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And what happens to the, our pastors? How do they do that? You didn't tell us how they do that, sir. Eh? Yes. At night, our overseers are praying. You will be seeing some still sending text messages at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. I remember about 20 years ago when my wife was going to have a baby. She, she was in labor at about 12 midnight. They sent men of God to come and pray with her at 12 midnight. Not minding. Yes. We thank God for this gospel. We thank God for the love of God. Yes. The safeguard. Make sure everybody is well. Okay. May God bless our pastors. Yes, item number five. Item number five. Why is it important that the pastor or one with similar responsibilities seeks God's guidance and wisdom in all the decisions he makes for the welfare of the congregation and that he be faithful to the soul of each one? You didn't read that properly. Yes. Why is it important that a pastor or one with similar responsibilities seek God's guidance and wisdom in all the de decisions he makes for the welfare of the congregation and that he himself be faithful to the soul of each of them? Why is it important? Some, yes, sister, you have not spoken. Why is it important? Um, because the pastor or the minister He's also a human being. He can make a mistake. So taking God's advice and guidelines is very important. God bless you. The pastor leans on God to be able to guide the sheep. God bless you. Yes, sir. It's very important because he's going to give account of each of the souls under him. Thank you. The souls are very precious. Thank you. Yes, more. Why? Yes. He's the one to give account hmm. of our soul, just as the uh, watchman. If he did not uh, uh, be diligent or watch very well, they said that anything that happens to the people, the blood will be upon him. So likewise, he's the one to give account Thank of this. God bless you. We remember in Psalm 23 verse 1, that, that shepherd song, the Lord is my... Who was talking? That was a shepherd that was still talking that the Lord is his shepherd. Yes, Jesus is the shepherd of the shepherd. He is the chief shepherd. And as our shepherds, our leaders, as they lean on God, that's what makes us too, to be able to lean on them. And we know God will continue to answer them. So that as we call to, God will help them also to be able to answer us. Jesus is the chief shepherd. And he knows the way best. And you know, without Christ, can we do anything? Without Christ, they, too, they can't do anything. And that's why a lot of times, in fact, when I came to the gospel, it was very, every time I go to ask for counseling, I would think they would tell me, do this, do this, do this, do this. They are always telling me the same thing. I don't know who has experienced it. That they always say the same thing. They always say the same thing. Yes, Brother Jeremiah. That's it. Thank you. Go and pray. You come a marital matter. Go and pray. Is a educational school matter. Go and pray. It is work matter. Go and everything. They, they lead you back to God. And as they tell you to go and pray, like the sister said, they will also tell you that they are doing what for you. They are praying for you. And as God is confirming to you, God is also inspiring them. By the time you come, God said this, they will, be, they will say yes. In fact, as you were praying, in fact, the same way God told me. May God bless our ministers. May God bless our fathers. May God keep them for us. Item number six. Yes, sister. Many times, students in school are taught to think things out for themselves to question authorities and indirectly not to submit to their elders. How does Hebrews chapter 13, 17 refute those Romanistic teachings? Can we read that Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17? Hebrews 13, 17. Hebrews 13, 17. Yes, sister. Okay. Wait for... 
over you and submit yourselves for the watch for your souls as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Thank you. We see it in the modern society. They say that you should let the child grow by himself, let the child develop by himself, let the child discover himself. And they even teach the children in ways that you should question. Question your parents. Question authority. Question your teachers. Why should I do this? Why must I do it? What's the meaning of, what about if I don't want to? Can I not have it my way? What is the danger behind that kind of a lifestyle? What is the danger? What, what is the danger? With what, this warning that God gives us in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. What is the danger? When you leave a child to grow by himself, what will he become? Yes? Is that Samuel Lewumi? Yes, the mic is near you. What will such a child become? He will become a wayward child. He will become a wayward child. And what will be the eventual result to society? They, like how it's common in the world today, child that thief, commit uh, one sin or the other, stealing, arm robbery, and all that. Thank you. We find out that these children will not have been able to, to learn respect, to learn the fear of God. We know many times that one who is taught at a young age to obey his elders is more likely to continue that way. The Bible says, teach a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old. He will not depart. What you have taught him is what he will know. But when you never had a chance to teach him, what will he know? He will just learn his own way. That he can do anything. He can be anything. He can go anywhere. It's very sad when we see some children that they even shout at their parents. You go to the supermarket, you see children talking down on their parents. And say, no, even very young children. I tell myself, and I look at the mothers or maybe the father, and I say, this child that is not obeying you at this age, when you become an old man, will he remember to come and take care of you? So that is one of the very major work that God gave us spiritual leaders, whether they are fathers at home, whether they are pastors or overseers, their job is to carve out a good moral being out of us. We know a lot of time, he says, one who is taught to honor the ministry will also grow in that way. But somebody that's in their house, maybe even the father, talks evil of the ministry. What kind of children will those be? Will they, be res will they respect the ministry? No. So we also see that even these children we are talking about, the parents from home, charity begins at charity begins at home. The parents are also spiritual leaders. And may God give us children that will obey us. Amen. And may God help we parents too to be role models to them. Amen. That we will not force them to obey, but they will see the light of God. They will see the truth, the honesty, the simplicity. And they will say, oh no, this is, this is a good lifestyle my parents have lived. I want to live in that way. May God help us to do that. Let's see question number seven. Number. Seven. At what is seven. At what is should children be taught to honor and obey their elders and ministers? See Isaiah chapter 28 verse 9. Okay. Brother Isaiah, you mean, uh, sorry, <laughs> pardon me. Isaiah Yusufu, <laughs> you are reading that for us. Isaiah 28, verse 9. Verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Thank you. So, at what age should children be taught to honor and obey their elders and ministers? From what age? Yes? Mommy Fadira? At what age? From, uh, from the day they are born, it starts instilling the fear of God in them. Read the word of God to them, teach Thank them, 
um, when they see elders, teach them how to obey elders, teach them to teach them memory verses, take them to Sunday school, teach them songs, uh, ensure that they, are, they participate in activities, and follow up with them all the way. God bless you. Thank you very much. Is there anything to add? Nothing. I can see some of you say, she did good justice. Thank you. That is, we should do what? Catch them. Catch them young. Catch them young. May God bless our mothers. That from the point of, he said, as they are winning, when they are still breastfeeding, you pray with them there. Read memory verse to them. Eh? I see some very young mothers, they will take, when their children are still babies, they will go to elementary Sunday school and they will collect the lesson for the next week. And they'll be showing the picture in front of the two-month-old baby, three-month-old baby, catching them young. Catching them young. May God help. God bless you. Item number eight. Item number eight. What kind of life does God's word command his ministers to live? Titus chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. What effect will this type of example have on the minister's congregation and others who meet him? Thank you. Titus chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Who is reading that for us? Thank you, Samuel. Titus chapter 2, verse 7. In all things, show thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, show, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that, that he that is of contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Thank you. So what kind of life are, the, are our ministers to live before us? A pattern of? Yes. A, so that's what? And a life of example. Follow me as I follow is not do as I say, but what? Do as I do. It's not do as I say. They are not just telling us the word. They themselves, they are doing what? They are living the word. And what is it, which is easier to follow? Is it the person that is saying it or the person that is doing it? Which one is easier to follow? Can somebody, yes, somebody who had a, a Christian father. Yes, Brother Jeremiah, please. You have the mic, please. The person that is doing it. The person that is doing it. Leave it by example. Yes. Sister Fumi, can you share your experience with your, with your daddy? Eh? How did his life impact yours? Okay, my dad was a man of faith. I saw how he was uh, navigating the la this life, especially in um, storming periods. And that's a, that has really helped me because I found myself in a, a storming time too. And I was remembering the way it was navigating. So, and that really helped me. Thank you. What examples do we learn from our fathers? Yes, and our mother, and our spiritual leaders. What are those examples that we learn from them? What do we see them do that we want to do as they do? Yes, Brother Jeremiah. Their prayer life. Thank you. Their prayer life. Yes, more? Yes. Yes, Brother. When my grandmother is going out, before he went out, he will pray. When he come in, he will pray. Every Thank time you. praying. Prayer life, yes. <laughs> Permit me, yes, sister. They believe that everything is possible. Amen. No matter how the problem is, they just tell you, God can do all things. Let us pray about it, and it will come to pass. Amen. What about their Bible study life? Do we remember Baba Ino? Eh? Do you remember Baba Ino? Or Baba Shoinka? Yes, those were encyclopedias of, of scripture. Yes. And we will sit under their teaching two hours, three hours. And we are not complaining that uh, like today. We are enjoying it. And we are writing. We are writing. And we go back to school. And some of us will become, we will, be, we will preach the whole sermon. Why? Because every exclamation we took, very sound men. And God helped them to shape in our lives. May God bless their memory. Yeah. And even our fathers today, may God strengthen them. Amen. Yes. They influence our lives through their godly examples. Even the way they obey their own senior ministers. 
How does that speak to you? When you see when they discipline some, a father disciplines another father, say, no, maybe sometimes they even did the right thing, but probably they did not, it was not properly understood. And they did, how do we see them behave? We see them submit. Even sometimes, the person that is disciplining another, or the person disciplined is even older in age than the one that is disciplining him. But what do we see? We see them do what? Submit to themselves. How does that speak to us? How does that speak to us? May God help us. Amen. Item number nine. No, let somebody else. Item number nine. Sister Adebayo, you can read for us. Okay. Why is it not necessary for us to fully understand the reason for each decision made by the ministry in order to heed it? I would like to read that again because this is very, very important for us. Why is it not necessary for us to fully understand the reason for each decision made by the ministry in order to heed to it? To heed it. Why is it not? This is very, very crucial. Because we have just been talking submission. Yes. You want to answer? Yes, sister. Speak to the mic. Because we trust that they were being led by God. God bless you. Because we trust they were being led by God. Yes. He says, why must we not understand? When they say go, they are not asking why. You just go. Why must you behave? Why do you just simply obey? Why? Without questioning them. Yes, we want more. Yes, brother Otobat. We know that present this one leader at Thank you. God bless you. Yes? Yes, sister Ogunremi. One of the reasons is that we want to obey the instruction of God that says obey them that have the rule over you. Thank you, brother Benjamin. We don't question God, and so we will not question them because we know they get their own um, authority from God. God bless you. Yes, brother. Sorry, I don't know your name. It is because they are representatives of God. Thank you. We are all correct. Yes, ma. We know that they, they themselves, they endeavor for to follow the perfect will of God. Good. So likewise, we, we should obey them because we know that they follow the will and the instruction of God. God bless you. Yes, Brother Jeremiah. Before taking any step, they will pray about it so they cannot lead us uh, wrongly. God bless you. Sister Fumi. Thank you. <laughs> they dare not make that mistake to mislead us. Because they are going to do what? They are going to give account. I gave you how many sheep? How many people did I bring to your church? How many people did I give you to? So how many are remaining? And that's why we see in the life of that shepherd that if they return back home and one is missing, what does he do? He will lock the other one safely and he will go everywhere. Even in endangering his own life, he must search for that one. You know, there is something called the law of the big picture. What did I call it? The law of the big picture. The watchman that we said is on the tower, can anybody in the city see what he sees? Is it possible? He's at an advantage point. That's how our pastors and our ministers and the church ministry around us, that's how they are. They are, at, they are seeing a bigger picture. They hear more. They see more. They pray more. And of course, God is leading them more. Moses would have gone up there for how many days and nights? 40. What is he doing? To know the perfect will of God. When God gave him all the description of how that temple, he said, do it exactly as you, what? You saw it on the mount. I showed it to you. It's you I gave the instruction. Go, do exactly. That is exactly how God is leading our ministers our fathers, our overseers, and the whole church ministry. The sheep can never understand like the shepherd. Is it possible? No. 
Can the children understand like the parents? Is it possible? God leads our leaders to lead us. Our own is to trust and He says, if we are willing and obedient, we shall do what? So, let us close by what blessings do we get for submitting to our spiritual leaders? What blessings accrue for us? Anybody, you know we have said it, that anybody that is traveling on that journey, if you don't keep to the rules, all those instructions, a lot of things can happen. But now, let's look at it. If one, after you have met with Jesus, after you have been saved, and God brings you into a fold like this, he expects you to do what? Submit to everything you hear our leaders say. When they call for teamwork, when they call for prayer, when they, some think some services are more important than another. Is any service more important than another? No. Everyone works together for good for us. Sometimes you eat swallow food. Sometimes you eat soft cereal. Sometimes it is water or juice that you want to. Your body needs different kinds of nutrients. And that is how all the different things they are calling us to. That is how those things add to our spiritual upbringing. So what blessings do we get? Do we stand to gain if we submit? Yes. The blessings for the obedient or for the person who submits. Yes, my brother. Answers to prayers. God bless you. Answers to prayers. Yes, my brother in blue shirt. The blessing of healing. Bless so healing. Good. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Protected from harms. Say that again, please. Protection from harm. Protection hams. from danger. Yes. Protection. Yes, Sister Adelola. There will be oneness, unity. God bless you. Thank you. And when there is unity, we are sure God blesses. Is that correct? Yes, more. On this side. Yes, Sister Ogun. 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 Peace of, peace of mind and peace of God around us. Amen. Peace of mind and peace of God. Yes, Brother John Adibui. Yes, sir. What blessings accrue to the obedient, to him who submits? Divine guidance. And then, when that person also becomes a leader, people will submit to him as well. God bless you. Thank you. Hmm. When he has learned to submit to others, when he's put in the place, he himself, people will do what? They will submit. But if the person had been a tyrant, always complaining, by the time they now ask him to lead a team, what does he expect to find in that team? Yes, sir. We will have God's favor and blessings. Amen. We will have God's favor and God's blessings. May God help us to submit. In fact, that word submit, I tried to look for the meaning. And that word submit says that we should accept or we should yield to a superior force or authority or the will of a senior person. We should do what? Accept it. If they say, do this, accept it. If they say, we are not going to do this, okay, sir, I agree, sir. Anyone that, is, anyone that has a rule over us, he said we should do what? We should obey them. Another one says we should subject ourselves to a particular process or treatment or condition. You know, many times, many people say, eh, but maybe from where I came from, they didn't used to do it like this. They used to do, what does God expect from us? Align with this process. Align with this process. You cannot be on that road, that journey road, and where they said you should go 30 miles per hour, you decide to go 50 miles per hour, and you are bending. What happens? And it's on the mountain side again. What happens? That person can... The enemy of our soul is also at different junctions, waiting for the disobedient person. All these blessings we have said will accrue to the person who obeys. He's going to steal it from that person. And the only thing that person will be left with is what? Trouble, causes, pain, challenges. In the same place, God will be prospering some, and in the same place, some will be going down. Let's check. God has brought this lesson for us, for us to check ourselves. He wants us to get along with others in a very sweet manner. Jesus is all about love and all about relationship. In fact, the totality of the law, what did he sum it as? Love God and what? Love your brother as yourself. 
if we love our brothers as ourselves, we will be able to get along more friendly, more wonderfully, right? There will be no fight. When they say, take it up, everything is up. When they say, take it, go, everybody say, go. When they say, come, everybody does what? Come. The place will be sweet. Is that right? Our life will be sweet. We will be happy. There will be victory. Before we pray, God will answer. Even while we are yet speaking, God will hear. Miracles will abound. Signs and wonders will abound. And there will be a lot of joy. And prosperity, spiritually, physically, in every area of our life. Just because why? We have done the will of God by what? Submitting to the spiritual leadership that God has given us. May God teach us this lesson more. And as we go during the week, it is a lesson that we should, be, we should still continue to digest. God, teach me to submit. Teach me to submit. During announcements, a lot of us do not listen well. But during announcements, a lot of instructions are coming out. Pray for one hour, every family. If we obey it, before the blessing of the church or the blessing of the, family, of the country will come, your own blessing in your house will be full. May God help us to submit. Amen. That will be our lesson. And we know that God will bless everything that concerns us. As we do, we do what? We continue to strive on the journey to go to heaven. God bless you for coming.
we welcome you back from the classes where we had our lesson. And we also want to welcome our internet audience who are equally joining us in this Bible study. Before we have our review, we want to quickly listen to the following announcements. Schedule of meetings during the week. Daily prayer meetings, retreats, Monday and evening for campground residents and those living around the campground we hold as scheduled. Tomorrow, by the grace of God, which is Thursday, 5.30 in the morning to 6, early morning prayer meeting, 6 to 8, there will be prayer retreat. In the evening, 6 to 7, there will be evening prayer meeting. But don't forget, we have virtual film show tomorrow in the evening because tomorrow, by the special grace of God, our youths will start their conference. So they are kick-starting that conference with this film show. Kindly connect to it, and you will be glad that you did. Also on Friday, the prayer meetings we hold. Men's prayer retreat on Thursday, men in group two. Please don't forget that 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. you have the prayer. Other men in other groups are equally welcomed. And if you do not belong to any group in Anthony and you want to join us, you are cordially invited. Um, as earlier announced, our Easter retreat program transitioning. It is focusing on the International Youth Camp. This year, the youth department will hold a program for all youth workers and youths in general in what is called a youth conference with the theme, Ignite Your Faith. The program is scheduled for March 28 to 30th, 2024. It is also a program that is going to benefit adults. So we are not localizing this program to youth alone. Everyone is cordially invited. Series of programs, starting with online film show, which I mentioned earlier on, we hold tomorrow here at Anthony. The movie will be shown in the basement at 8 p.m. Other programs include workers' segments and general segment sessions. For effective planning, we request that those attending should register via the link earlier supplied. Our schedule of service next week, Sunday, is as follows. I hope the WCS will project it. However, I will read from here. Sunday school in the morning for children at 8.30. Adults on the school, 9 o'clock. Children's service, 9.40 a.m. Devotional service, 10.45 a.m. Easter concert, 5 p.m. Those of you who have not collected your invitation cards, you still have the opportunity to do so. Make sure you bring somebody to watch our concert. Lesson review is what we want to embark upon now. We thank God for this vitally important lesson, and I want to describe it in a short word. It is a behavioral lesson. It is an attitudinal level, uh, lesson. It has to do with relationship, and this is the series we have begun. 
during the course of the study we were told last week, it was follow me. And this week, it is submission to spiritual leaders. We have been given definition of submission, so I'm not going to take much, much of your time on that. But suffice to mention that submission is vitally important because lack of it stands at the root of every sin. Lack of submission is the root of every sin you can think of. In the Bible, we have four gardens. Four gardens are mentioned in the Bible. And two are characterized by sadness and joy. And all because of this issue we have discussed, submission. And these two gardens that are characterized by sadness and joy, can anybody just mention? As Bible students, do you know where submission is mentioned? Or where submission surfaces? Can anybody remember? Anybody? Okay. We have the Garden of Eden, and we have the Garden of Gethsemane. In the Garden of Gethsemane, a group of people was expected to submit. And what was the instruction given to that group? Anybody? Yes, Sister Fumilayo. Please give her the mic. Tarry with him, they should pray. Thank you very much. Jesus told them as they go to the garden, you tarry here and join me in prayers. And he went further and began to pray. By the time he came back, what did he find the disciples doing? All of us, they were sleeping. The room in their heart had been closed. My prayer for you tonight is that the room you have created for Jesus in your heart will not be closed by the devil. Amen. And those of you who have not created room for, the, for, for, for Jesus to come in, this night, God will give you the enabling grace Amen. to do so. Amen. So our elementary children, I am back to you now. Can anybody tell me the attitude of Michelle and... His bro her brother. Yes. Anybody who wants to tell me now? The name of the brother is Charlie. Any child there? Elementary? Okay. Michelle and Charlie, they went for a Christmas festival. And when they got to the city of Tyre, Tyre City, they wanted a room in any of the motels, but there was no room for them. They sought and sought, there was no room. So the father and the mother decided that they would go back to their city. And these two children said, no, daddy, no, daddy, we are not going back. But there was no room for them. Eventually, they diverted from the festival to go and watch a movie. The movie they watched was The Journey of Mary and uh, Joseph to Bethlehem. And just like that, they didn't find a room for Jesus Christ. Just like Charlie and Mitchell, could not find room in that city. Mary and Joseph could not find room in the, in the inn. And so, after that, the children asked, how do we create room? Children, I want to ask, how do you create room for Jesus? 
I hope the elementary children are there. Yes, okay. By giving him our hearts. Thank you. By giving Jesus our hearts. We need to pray. We need to confess our sins. We need to repent of them. And we need to believe. After forsaking, we need to tell Jesus, give me salvation. And when salvation comes to your heart, Jesus comes to dwell there. Tonight is a night of salvation. Yeah. Intermediate, we have learned our lesson. I want to ask, a driver is moving on the highway. He has a passenger by his side. Between the two of them. Who sees the road more clearly? Who sees the road more clearly? Is it the driver or the passenger by his side? Yes? Stand up if you know you stand up and tell me. Eh? The driver. Thank you. The driver sees the road more than the passenger. Sometimes the passenger may feel he is alert, but often than not, more often than not, the passenger may fall asleep. Can the driver afford to sleep? If he sleeps, what will happen? There will be accident. May we not have spiritual accident? Some people have had spiritual accident because of their failure to submit to their spiritual leaders. God has specially prepared this vitally important lesson for us to adequately equip us for the coming of Jesus Christ. And we cannot afford to fail. And God is going to help us. Amen. So when the disciples didn't pray, before long, the enemies came, they took Jesus, and one of them quickly drew his sword. What happened? What happened? Adults. What happened? He caught the ear of Marcus. That was a miracle there. Peter would have succeeded in cutting off his neck. But he landed on the ear, and the ear fell. And Jesus quickly took it and put it back. Another miracle. And he told him, do you think I cannot call 12, more than 12 legions of angels to defend me? Nobody can defend God. Can anybody defend God? God is our defender. And he has given us leaders, spiritual leaders, to defend us, to help us, to lead us, to direct us. And when we submit to them, by the grace of God, our leaders and all of us, we shall make the party gate. Amen. You remember in the Garden of Eden, God told them specifically, of all the fruits in the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But the one in the middle of the garden, thou shouldest, shall, thou shouldest not eat. Because the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Did they submit to the instruction? Did they? I want a chorus answer. They didn't submit. And what happened? Even though they didn't die spirit, uh, physically, but spiritually, Adam and Eve died. So it is with us today. When we do not submit to our spiritual leaders, there is the tendency to die spiritually. We may be moving around, we may be doing whatever we are doing, but down deep in our heart, there is a question mark. Disobedience is not a feature of a Christian. Lack of submission is not a feature of a Christian. We all are heaven bound, and God wants all of us to submit. The question I want to ask centers on our spiritual leaders. Who are they? Intermediates or adults? Who are our spiritual leaders? Let us exhaust this list. Let us exhaust the list. Yeah? Intermediates? God. Our spiritual leaders. Our elders. Yes, our elders. I want you to speak. No, split it. Want to hear one by one. 
our ministers and preachers. Okay, our ministers and our preachers, right? Our teachers. Both of our godly parents. Are they our spiritual leaders? Yes. What of our group leaders? Are they our spiritual leaders? Yes. What of our team leaders? Are they our spiritual leaders? Yes. You know, when we talk of spiritual leaders, we are not looking at Brother Isaac alone. We are not looking at the district superintendent alone. We are also looking at the hierarchy. All those that God has put over us to supervise us, to lead us, to direct us, to encourage us, we must be submissive. It is so important that Paul the Apostle used the marriage to admonish us. What did he tell the wives? What did he tell the wives? What did he tell the wives? Yes, it's a familiar. Your Thank you very much. Wives, submit unto your own Husbands. It doesn't matter whether you are more educated than your husband. It doesn't matter whether you are richer than your husband. It doesn't matter your status in life. The moment you have a husband, you must submit to him. That is God's injunction. Lack of submission has created a lot of, a lot of hassles in the home. We have broken homes. Many people are suffering in silence today because of lack of submission. And conversely, Paul the Apostle said, having received submission from your wife, must, what must the husband do? Love your wife. The teacher emphasized it. The whole commandments, the, whole, the Ten Commandments are summarized in only two. You remember when that lawyer came with a view to tempting Jesus? Which one is the, the great commandment? He thought he was going to tempt Jesus with a view to catching him. But Jesus told him, what does the Bible say? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. May God help us to keep this law. This injunction, this lesson has been provided for us to help us along this journey. And I know, without doubt, if we align ourselves with the lesson, if we do all that the lesson is requiring us to do, we shall make a very wonderful entry into heaven. We don't know when Jesus is going to come. If you are still not submissive up to now, or maybe you have shacked your responsibility as regards submission this night, it's a night of correction. It's a night of alignment. It's a night of exercising the right that the Lord has given to you by bringing you here to listen to this lesson. I don't think anybody should leave this place with an iota of doubt, iota of lack of submission, iota of disobedience, iota of not yielding. We want to leave this place rejoicing. And the Lord is going to make it for us. Amen. So, we are going to end the review here to allow enough time for prayers. We want to pray, and we want to pray our way through. If you discover yourself in any way that you have not submitted, either to the higher authority or to the horizontal authority sometimes, we operate at a, latitud a latitudinal level. Your, uh, uh, your colleague, your friend, that God has given charge over you, don't look at him as your mate. He has a responsibility. If you know you have not submitted yourself in any way, you can come to the altar. After singing the last song, we have a room here. We want to prepare our hearts. We want to ensure that Jesus dwells abundantly in our hearts. And when we do that, we know our journey to heaven would have been straightened. May God bless us as we pray tonight. We are going to stand up to sing hymn number 253. Thereafter, let us occupy our positions at the altar.
and pray fervently. 253. Just as God, who reigns on high, spake to men in days gone by, so the Lord is calling men today. And my brother, days is true. Whatsoever he says to you, there is but one thing to do, just obey. The spirit of obedience, God will send it down tonight. Amen. Upon all those who are derelict, upon all those who are, who, have, who are falling short of this standard, and God will bring such people to the path of rectitude. The organist will give us the tune and we shall stand up to sing stanzas one and three. Thereafter, the closing prayer, and then we can come to the altar. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the lesson you have taught us. We are about to go on our knees. That grace to obey. That grace to submit. Father, grant to us. Amen. Answer our prayers tonight. Amen. Walk in through our hearts. Wash us with your blood. Amen. Answer every prayer tonight. Amen. To your glory and honor. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The altar is open. Please come to the altar. God is waiting for you. First, surrender your heart to God. When you surrender to God, you'll be able to submit to spiritual leaders. You'll be able to submit. Come to the altar now. If you've not been saved, Jesus will save you tonight. Just say, Lord, I have heard. Have mercy on me. He will hear and answer you. It's a time to pray. It's the time to call upon God. This lesson has come for a reason. God has brought this lesson to us for a reason. May you not go in vain in your life. Pray. Pray. If you have not surrendered your life, your heart to Jesus, this is the time. Surrender to him now by confessing your sins, by telling him, Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me, O God. I want to submit. I want to obey you. I want to surrender my life. God will answer. Pray. Pray. Open your mouth. Just talk to God now. Open your mouth and say, Lord Jesus, the grace to obey, the grace to submit, give to me. Lord, I've been stubborn. I've been disobedient. But Lord, tonight, change me, O oh Lord. When you disobey, those that God has put in authority, you are disobeying God. When you speak evil of them, you are talking against God. 
But God will show you mercy tonight. If you pray. Amen. Pray. 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 Just obey. It's time to surrender. Say, Lord, here am I. I want to follow you. When you follow Jesus with all your heart, it will be easier for you to submit. It will not be difficult for you to surrender. Amen. Pray. Pray. Jesus is calling. Pray. Is there any room in your heart for me to come in? That's what Jesus is asking. Is there any room in your heart? Let Jesus come into your heart. Let Jesus come into your heart. Lord, help me. Jesus, help me. In any 